All right, welcome back to Power Forward. Justin White alongside Mateen Cleaves. Mateen, what's going on, my man? Jay White is all good. I am flying high, baby, and life is great. Well, you know that we love our parallels with sports and business, and today we've got another guest who fits the bill. Uh, he is actually a former teammate of yours from your oh, yeah. Michigan State days. And not only is he now in the business world, he's now in the financial world as well. And um, you and him have a lot, obviously have a lot in common. But I didn't realize this actually until a short time ago. Uh, he and I also have something in common uh, in, in the sense that he was a television anchor for a minute. Oh, uh, now, wow. I know you, you were on TV too, Mateen. I, I can't give you, you know, credit for like every single thing on your resume. <laughs> We'd be sitting here all day, but I just, I had to throw that in there, but, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we're really pleased to be joined by David Thomas, who is uh, the newly minted associate partner at the podium group. David, welcome to power forward. Justin Mo, please. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, Justin, I will say, uh, yeah, I was a news anchor for a, a brief second. It definitely is not my uh, forte. I'll leave that to experts like yourself and the team. <laughs> well, I, I don't, I don't know if we're experts, but you know, fake it till you make it kind of thing, I guess. But, right. um, but no, happy to have you here. And uh, yeah, you know, we we absolutely love when we get the opportunity to to bring people on the show who, um, you know, who have made a, a career transition. Uh, and, and in your case, you know, you you played basketball at Michigan State. You had a you had a professional basketball career that took you overseas. Uh, you, you've done a few other things in between. Uh, and now, as I said, you're you're in the financial world, uh, working for Podium. Just just first of all, give us an idea of of why you made the switch at this time and how it's how it's been going so far. Well, you know, I, like you, you kind of read over my my bio just now, but I had six unbelievable years with Coach Izzo as a staff member, um, and five as a player. So that's eleven years total under a Hall of Fame coach, and. Um, what I gained from him and the rest of his staff was invaluable. You know, a lot of life lessons um, over, over those 11 years. Uh, mind you, I did do, do one year with Susie Merchant and Coach Merchant on the women's side as well. So, again, another unbelievable human being that I got to spend, be able to spend intimate, close time with. But um, for me, it was a time for, you know, I wasn't going to go the coaching route. Um, and I'm getting up there in age, as you can see by the gray. So it's time to make a decision, you know. Um, not sure how long Coach Izzo was going to be there. Um, and, you know, in my position, uh, if a new coach comes in, I may not, you know, have a position there. But more so than anything, really, Justin and Martin, it's it was about um, being able to spend some more time with my family. Um, and, you know, I have a 12-year-old, a, a 9-year-old, soon to be 10, and a 2-year-old. And uh, it, was, it was, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that I was there for them, um, moving over to the podium uh, risk management gave me that opportunity to basically build my own business with the partnership of, of, of Paul Davis and Manny Amesqua, who are unbelievable um, and, and great mentors to me. Um, so that, that in total um, is kind of why I made the change, um, but primarily for my, for my family. Okay. So I, I like that DT now. Okay. We know why you made the change, but I, I have to know uh, like, like the feeling you had when you made the change. Like, and, and what I mean by that, I know when I uh, came over to corporate America, if that's if we say if, if that's what we want to say, uh, my nerves were all over the place, man. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I was coming from a place where I thought I was an expert, you know, a sports background. Now I'm coming in and don't know anything uh, about mortgages when I started. So for you, how how were your nerves? Were you a little nervous when you made the transition? Oh, man, Mo, excellent question, because, you know, as athletes, you know, you have you think you're, you're working on your craft for so long and you know that. Right. Um, so as an athlete, pr uh, former player, I had that. And then being with director of operations for Michigan State basketball, like you said, I, I was the expert at that. Um, so the nerves were all, all, all over the place, <laughs> to be honest. And there was a lot of, you know, should I, shouldn't I, shouldn't I, sh you know, you know, what am, what am I doing? Um, but you know, just, just being around Manny, um, and you guys had him on your show, he's an individual that, uh, much like a head coach, he, uh, he's encouraging, he's a leader, 
he uh, instills some something in you that makes you just want to be around him and, and produce and, and help and be part of a team. So once I had that feeling, I knew I knew it, this this was the place for me to be. But I tell you what, I was just like, I'm just like you. I'm like, man, what is going on? All these calendar <laughs> invites and, <laughs> and all this professional stuff. You know? I used to just go down the hall and knock on all the coaches' doors and say, hey, uh, coach wants to meet. Let's go now. You know, and now it's like, okay, let me check my schedule and make sure it works with yours. And then we schedule a meeting a month, two months later. <laughs> David, that, that may be the case, but for, for those of our listeners who aren't familiar with the, the gig that you formerly held, you know, being a, a director of operations for, uh, for a top tier uh, college basketball cro- program carries a lot of responsibility and you, you have a lot of different things that you have to do on a daily basis. When you were thinking about making this transition out of the sports world and into the business world, what kind of skills did you think to yourself and say, okay, I have this, I have this, and I have this. I, I think this could help me um, in, in this career path that I'm now going to pursue. Sure, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that carries over. Um, being being in my role as an operations director, it was almost like, you know, with the, obviously Coach Izzo was our CEO, our, 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 our leader, but it was almost like it was my own business, you know, because I had to deal with marketing, I had to deal with compliance, I had to deal with the academic portion. So it was almost like, you know, I was running our own business, the facility, keep keeping up on the Breslin Center and, and projects and all that. So that's why, and I was an entrepreneur in my, my past life, um, I did own a, a business as well, but um, that's a lot of that stuff and managing all these different pieces, I think is gonna help me um, in this new role because essentially what I am, yeah, I'm part of the podium risk management, which is an umbrella of um, Mass Mutual Great Lakes, but it's also my own David Thomas um, practice, you know, and and I've got to make sure, you know, whether it's scheduling, whether we're talking about calendars, I'm um, being organized, um, keeping up with my clients. Um, a lot of that stuff is is going to definitely transition over to, to my new career. You, we have people, um, we probably have listeners that's listening that want to make the jump, you know, and I know I asked you a question about your emotions and um, so what, what gave you the, um, the go ahead to make it happen? You know, I know, cause I'm sure you had to think about that. What was it, um, that ultimately you, the go ahead to screw it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a leap of faith and, uh, I'm going for it. Sure. I think, you know, one thing that, you know, part of my previous role is, um, a mentorship or life skills, um, teacher for, for our student athletes at Michigan state. In the summer of 2020, during the COVID, I started a book club with them and uh, we read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Matter of fact, I got it sitting right here. And um, in that, there's a quote where he talks about, you know, um, uh, I'm going to screw up the quote, but essentially, (laughs) why work for somebody else for 30 or 40 years to walk away with just a uh, retirement package and still live and check the check, you know? And, uh, you know, when you can be building something for yourself, right? And so that kind of resonated with me. And like I said, I was an entrepreneur and, you know, I feel like I, you know, can run my own business. So that really resonated with me. And like, you know, what am I doing? As great as Michigan State, the institution, what they do for your benefits, you know, it, it's it's a home, it's a family. Um, at some point, you just got to do, you know, and start saying, stop, stop reading and, and doing research and, and doing all this, at some point, you've got to jump in. You know, I just had, I just had lunch with, with one of our, our players, Julius Marble. Um, I'm, I'm still, you know, somewhat mentoring. And I said, Julius, the biggest thing you don't want to live with is regrets, you know? Yeah. And um, I, think, I think all three of us, all your listeners, you know, we've, we've lived with regrets and we gr- regret those regrets. You know, so <laughs> it's time to just do, you know, life is so short and COVID has taught us that a lot of us, you know, may have lost friends and loved ones, but it just put things in perspective as well. Like, man, you just got to do it, live life, do it, um, make the jump, um, you know, and and ride with, with it and be flexible um, are, are some, some great things. If you're, if you're looking to, to make a change. 
All right. So you mentioned the fact that you've been an entrepreneur before. So this isn't exactly, you know, uncharted territory for you, but based on your own personal experience, David, um, what do you think it takes to become a successful entrepreneur in business? Well, I can say there's a lot of things I did that uh, made me unsuccessful, um, but I've learned from them. Um, you know, and I was, I was much younger, just finished playing basketball overseas and, and bought a, a car wash. And uh, my, my brother-in-law and business partner, Andre Hudson, and our former teammate um, uh, was part of that. And we just, you know, bought at the wrong time. Like a lot of things you learn in the business, you know, they say you, you make your money on the purchase, right? And um, for me, I got in over my head um, on the purchase and that monthly, <clears throat> that monthly um, commitment uh, really was weighing me down to the point where I, I just couldn't do it anymore. So that was, that was, that was, you know, they say, you know, you learn best from your mistakes. Um, so that was something huge that I learned from, um, is, is learning from, from that. Um, but during that time I had mentors, you know, you gotta have business mentors. And for me, I got, uh, my lawyer, Tom Lapka, uh, who's been amazing for the real estate part of the business that I do. Um, he's been my mentor and Joel Ferguson, um, a local developer up here in Lansing, uh, you know, known across the state. Um, I, I would say those are some things as, as entrepreneur, don't think you know everything, you know, um, ask questions, um, do your research. But like Mateen and I were talking about, you got to jump in, you got to go do, you know, life's pass, passing you by. So, I mean, as you get older and you get these grades, you do learn a lot. I'm, I'm not perfect and I'm not a, a gazillionaire yet. But, you know, I'm on that path and I'm learning and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to help others um, along their way, too. Yeah. And, and you talked about mistakes. And I think, DT, what people got to understand, that's going to happen. You know, I, we talk about an A word a lot. And that's adversity. It's going to happen. Uh, I'm, I'm super big on what do you do when it happens? You know, how do you respond to it? So far as you, OK, you made some mistakes, but how was your mental? You know, I mean, did you have some down days? Did it make you gun shy um, to try different things? You know, how, how was your mental when you went through through those mistakes? Yeah, the, the, the mental part of it is tough. And I haven't I mean, I, I may have only shared this with my wife, but um, in, in owning owning this car, we had a, had a car wash on the south side of Lansing and I, I bought it. It was kind of run down a little bit, but I said, I can I can make this work. Right. And um I have, I probably during my three years of ownership took apart every single piece of that car wash. And it was a motor ride. Like you go in, you put your car in neutral, although a lot of people didn't and it jack up my chain. And that's why I have problems, <laughs> but you put it in neutral <laughs> and the car would go through on the chains and the rollers. And, and, you know, I, I there's been, there was times when I was literally guys, like it would be midnight and I got to make, I got to fix this car wash because I got to get it open for the next morning to, to generate some revenue. And I'm literally tearing this thing apart by myself, crying in this, in this tunnel, because I'm like, I got to make this work. Why is it working? Um, you know, so there was, there was some real hard times there that, you know, my wife didn't even know about until years later that this is what I was going through. I'm trying to make this work, but what do you do? It's adversity, right? More like it's, it's no different than, than you going to going down in Florida against Florida coming back, you know, like Willis Reed limping back to the court and us going on and being becoming champions. So I love that. You know, what do you do when adversity hits you? Um, how do you react? You know, I kept plugging away. You know, I stayed there till six in the morning and, and fixed it so that I could be open for the next day. So, you know, at some time, at some point, you just got to <laughs> fight through. And that's, that's a great story. Th and thank you for sharing that with us. And I think we've all had those moments right in life because, um, you know, you look at people who have been in sports or been successful in business and, and some people think, oh, that it's just, it's all going to be uh, positivity, but no, everybody goes through those things. Everybody has their obstacles they have to overcome. Um, for you though, one, one thing you mentioned um, that I want to go back to ab about your transition uh, to, to podium risk management, um, you are proactive with this, David. You, you said that, you know, um, you know, Coach Izzo, like you said, who knows how many years he has left. Um, and you wanted to kind of get out ahead of it um, and make this transition now. And, I, and I, I applaud you for that because I think a lot of people in life, you know, they wait. They wait until it's most convenient for them. Um, you, you could have waited, but, but you chose to, to do it now. Um, 
tell me about that. Just the importance of, of being proactive when making decisions, you know, whether it's a big decision like you, you had uh, with the career change or even, you know, being proactive as a, as a member of a team, like, like you and my team were, were teammates at Michigan state. Yeah, I think, I think that was a huge part of it too, Justin, like, and Coach Izzo, again, unbelievable human being where we had, we've had talks leading up to, to the decision, you know, and, and he, we, he, he would ask me all the time, DT, what do you want to do? You know, where's your passion? What do you want to move into? And he's like that with, you know, not just former athletes, but a lot of just people in general. That's just the type of person he is. So I was lucky to have conversations with him leading up to the decision. Um, you know, and I was looking at some other things, but again, Manny and, um, and Paul, you know, you, you know, a seed was planted two years ago. Uh, they came up to talk to, to me about what I was doing for our student athletes in the mentorship program and life skill teaching stuff that I was doing. <clears throat> and I met the two of them. Oh, I already knew Paul, but I met Manny. I was like, man, this is, this is like, I really like your energy. You know, like this is something I can I mean, it's, it's hard, it's hard not to like that guy. Right. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Anybody who comes in contact with them, you you feel the same way. So I was like, well, so I had that in the back of my head. Um, and you know, as the season went through, you know, we dealt with COVID some, you know, obviously tough times for everybody, um, you know, and us, us trying to get through a season last year and it was just, you know, an aha moment. And then, you know, reading the book and then these kind of things. So, it was just a moment where it was like, you, you know, this is this is the time. But no, you definitely have to plan. You know, it, it, it's hard just to jump into things free willy. Like when I was overseas, um, I was in Australia from 01 to 09. And for my last three years, over two years over there, I was building a business plan for my car wash. Come back, retire, you know, retire from 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 basketball at 33 and was able to move right into what I was already planning for the last two years. So I think that's important. You know, you do have to be flexible and, and you know, being able to, you know, bob and weave and move and, and do some things on the fly, but it's definitely worth having a plan, you know, and, and, you know, now, now what I do with life insurance, we're setting up a plan, you know, what, what should happen if God forbid you're gone yesterday, you know, what should happen? So it's all about that planning as well. Right. I like that, DT. And it's, you know, I listened to you talk. Um, you, you you mentioned Manny and Paul, you know, my teammates, my mentors. You've mentioned them uh, a few times. So, I, like, how important is it to surround yourself, first of all, around good mentors? And how important is it to listen, especially when you're not the expert, when you don't know? It's okay not to know, but how important is it to latch on and pay attention and, 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 and I, I won't say steal, but uh, utilize um, the advice from your mentors? I think, it's, I think it's huge, Mo, because there's no new inventions, really. Everything is just something that's tweaked or changed or, you know, so obviously everybody, you know, whatever you've gone through, somebody else has gone through something similar, right? And so why, why start at square one when you can get valuable advice, as long as you choose to listen, you know, and pay attention, valuable advice to help you on your, your path sooner than later. And many, many would say, you know, DT, we want to make sure you have a shorter runway. We don't want you to have a long runway of learning. You know, we want that short so you can get up in the air and fly. Right. And it's the same thing with a mentor. So like, you know, in my real estate business, you know, I'm going to talk if I have an issue or I'm trying to learn something, I'm going to go to somebody who's already been through that. You know, unfortunately, with dealing with student athletes, as Mo, you for sure well know that you thought you knew everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? oh, yeah. You know? Especially you're, you're an athlete. Um, you know, you're a top program and on TV every other night. Like you think, you know, everything. Just had this conversation with with one of our player form or one of our players. I said, why does it take so long for you guys to start listening to <laughs> those that, that have been through it? And he couldn't give me an answer, right? He's like, well, I don't know, I don't know. It's like, no, 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 just learn from us, listen to us, just like as if we're your parents, we do know best. So I think, I think it's, it's so critical for everybody to have somebody they can lean on, um, go to for advice, um, you know, and it, it just help you on our journey. We can't do this alone. Right. So, so you said uh, back at the start of the conversation that, that, you know, the main reason why you did this was to spend more time with your family. 
Um, and, and you just talked about the fact that in your role at Michigan State, you know, it was basically your job to to mentor these kids and to teach them life skills. And I'm sure you do the same with your own children. So you've had a lot of a lot of experience at this, David, with, with both, you know, uh, Division One, uh, you know, top level athletes and, and your own children. Um, what, what are the things that stand out to you? I mean, I'm sure there's so many different lessons and so many things that are important to you about, you know, the way you should approach life and things that are, you know, going to help you uh, grow as an individual. But what are the ones that I guess that are, that are foremost in your mind? Um, I, great question. There, there's so much to touch on there. Um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, I, I talk like my kid, my kid's playing, playing basketball and he's, he's pretty good, but he spends no time on it, you know? And it's, it's like, well, you know, coaches say to us as players, you know, you get out what you put in. And, um, you know, I still use that, that quote from today. I don't know if he coined it or somebody else did, but I use that because it's true with anything, you know, I could have chosen to, to, to do this interview or not to do the interview. I would have gotten out what I put in. So this may lead to some good things for me. It may not. But the fact that I did it instead of just, you know, sitting back is <clears throat> probably going to be better than not. Right. So so that's one thing that, that you know, with, with my own kids, I, I'm on them a lot about, you know, what are you doing to get better every day? You know, we used to say, you know, while you're sleeping, somebody else is getting better. You know, somebody's working on their craft. And, and it's so true. You know, you can spend eight hours playing a video game, but you can't take an hour and, and work on your handle or, you know, or, or, or work on whatever it is you, you do um, to invest in yourself. I mean, that's a lot of times people, we don't understand that you've got to invest in yourself. You know, I am my own business. You two are your own business. You're the CEOs of Justin and Mateen, right? So like you've got to invest in yourself in order to be better. And, um, so those those are some of the things that you know I, I, I relate to our guys. Unfortunately, the the human brain doesn't develop until you're 24 or five. So they didn't. A lot of them didn't get all that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> listen, you. Uh, that's funny, and and you you talked about his family, Justin, and I, I mean I, I've had, I've been previewed to I know his wife, man. We all went to school together, and his kids. I mean, DT is. Um, good dude himself, but he's definitely blessed, man, because he has a great family. And and let me ask you this, DT, because I know a lot of our a lot of people we've talked to or we've interacted with, some like all in with 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 their work. They're all in with their work, or some maybe all in with the family, do a little bit of work, you know. And some people that say, hey, you can do both. Um, What's your take on that? Like, you know, you're all in with work or, you, you know, can you, can, is it a possible way to be great at work and be a great family man? You know, I, I believe so. Uh, I'm still working through that process, you know, and, and figuring it out. I just knew that I need to do more with my family and balance that out a little more. Um, I'm able to coach Kingston in AU now, you know, I wasn't able to do that before, you know, for the last 10 years. So, so that, that's been great, but, no, I, th- I think that's 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 crucial. That's that's so key in your mental. You know, uh, thank God now it's starting to come up more in the media and it's it's more accepted. Is talking about mental health, right? And that's part of your mental health. You can go work out all day long, but you know if your mind's right, I mean not right. It's gonna you're gonna have some 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 problems, some issues, and um, and so I think that work life balance is so critical. We live in a you know, we live in a society where we're told you just have to work 24 seven. Like, you know, you have to work. If you're not working, then, you know, what are you doing? And, you know, you've traveled, I've traveled, just, I'm sure you've traveled, spent, you know, I spent a lot of time in Europe and overseas and it's a little different over there. You know, it's, it's not, it's not the same sort of rat race as it, as it is here in America. So between that, knowing that, and and me being part Jamaican, where I'm just laid back, anyways, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I seem to you know make sure, or I, at least right now, trying to make sure that I have that work life balance because um, one thing you can't get back is time, right? And, yeah, and our kids are our kids are growing yeah. up and doing things, and I want to make sure that they remember Daddy was there. Well, that's another thing we share in common, David, because I left TV because I wanted to spend more time with my family. You know, my, my kids were young. 
Um, I love the career. I love the job. It was my dream. Like for you and Mateen, it would, the dream was to play hoops. For me, the dream was to be a sports broadcaster. Um, and I lived it and I loved it. And I also knew when it was time to walk away because I knew what my priority was. So, so good for you. And to me, you know, it just comes down to what are your priorities in life? You know, and maybe I'm answering your question, Mateen, um, as far as like how you find that balance, you know, between, between work and family, but for everybody, it's different for everyone. You know, it's, it's, it's different because everyone has different priorities and different things that are important to them, but, but good for you for, uh, for recognizing it and acting on it. And now, uh, you, you are in this position of, you know, you, you go from, from helping these, these college athletes try to become better, better young men to now helping former athletes and, and others in business trying to, like you said, plan for the future. Uh, and this is, is such an important thing, um, you know, with, with financial planning. You know, what, what, when you think about this, this new uh, venture that you're, that you're in uh, and the opportunity you have to, to help a whole new uh, group of people, what, what excites you most about this? Um, Justin, I'm glad you found your why. First off, that's important. Thank you. you. We have to know your why and what you do, why you do what you do. So that's, that's awesome. But for me, it's just an extension of helping, I guess, you know, in my role at at Michigan state, I was a helper. If something needed to be done, call DT. A lot of stuff fell on me, um, which I welcome with open arms for the most part, but um, it's, it's about helping. Right. And, and now I get to do that, but, you know, I guess my, my, my net is so much greater, bigger now, because not am I helping, you know, Justin and Mateen, I'm helping their families generationally, you know, down the line, you know, and that's huge for me. Like I, you know, my dad worked his tail off and unfortunately, you know, didn't, didn't have anything when he, when he passed away. Right. And so now it hit home to me that I can be uh, of help and assistance to others um, and educate them. The biggest part is just educating people on what we do so that their families are left with something um, when it's all said and done. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of great things that the podium does. Um, that's one of them. And then also, as you mentioned, you know, <clears throat> with, with athletes, transitioning from, you know, um, playing to not playing, um, it, it, it's a big jump and it's hard. And so that's where we, you know, we, we like to be there for them is to do that as well. Wow. You know, it's funny DT, cause I know a lot of, uh, businessmen, business women, um, their motivation is money. You know, they just want to make the money, you know? And I think a lot of people think, uh, well, if you're rich, that brings happiness and all about the money. And, and it's funny, Justin, just asked you a question and you, you went into helping um, in life insurance. You're helping not only them, but people coming behind them. I work in the mortgage industry where I, I, mean, I interact with a lot of our sales guys. And, they, and their big thing is, you know, we're helping people get in houses, you know, people that, you know, and they get excited on that. Not the, the commission that comes behind that, but the fact that we can help a first time uh, buyer family get in a house, you know. So um, I think that's very important, man. So where, where did that come from? Because I know, you know, to me, it's like you help people and then the money will come. You know, the good thing about that for you. So your motivation is to help people. So where did that come from? You know, what do you get out of that? I, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's just innate in me, I guess. Um, you know, I, I like to think I'm a, a helpful, helpful type guy, just, just in general. Right. And so, um, you know, we go through this world, there's so many ups and downs and, and we deal with so many issues. Um, you know, I, it's funny. I was just thinking about today, an idea to have a, speaking of TV, a, a good news channel. Like all we hear is negativity, bad stuff, we're so divided as a country, as a, as a nation, as a, as a world, really, it's always, you know, it's always black and white and it's always a, a fight. Right. So to me, in my mind, it's like, why, like, why, why does it have to be that way? Right. And um, so, so I just, you know, I just, just naturally um, gravitate towards helping out. Um, it's just in my nature. Now I happen to be in an industry where it's the ultimate helping out, you know, um, I can, I can help a family, you know, or business, you know, say somebody unfortunately passes away in a business and okay, who does that business go to? Who's going to buy it out? What's going to happen? Who's insurance can help that, right? Like insurance can help a spouse of somebody who passed away, um, 
um, take over or buy a portion or, or, you know, or the shares back in the business. So I'm not sure, Mo, exactly where it comes from. I guess my parents um, being around teammates, you know, over the years um, in, in sport, you better be a helper. You can't, you know, especially in a team sport, you can't win by yourself. Right. So um, I guess that's kind of where it all comes from. And now I'm blessed to be able to be in the industry where I can help even more people. I, I like that, but be careful, though. The, the, the good news, TV, don't give up too many of the ideas, DT. Let, let's talk about that offline. We got <laughs> listeners that might steal that. So we'll talk about that later. <laughs> it's trademark. It's trademark. It's okay, trademark. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, you just you, you seem like somebody who, who just cares. I mean, you 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 know, first impressions, I mean, you just seem like a guy who cares about others and you genuinely care about doing a good job and impacting people. And, and you've certainly been able to do that, uh, you know, in, in your previous career. Um, you, you mentioned uh, something that I want to ask you about, though, again, about being your own CEO, right? You know, you're the CEO of, of your brand, of your business. What, what do you want your brand to be, David, in this, in this uh, new career of yours? And, and, you know, I guess part two of that question when you're advising somebody else, whether it's, you know, one of the, the kids at Michigan State or somebody who's, who's looking to break in as an entrepreneur themselves and build their brand, um, what do you say to them about that? Um, be genuine. You know, you have to be yourself. You have to be true to yourself. Be genuine. That's number one, because, you know, we know that you can see somebody who's fake a mile away. Right. So I think just be genuine. Be true to yourself, um, you know, and with with the invention of social media, everybody has an opinion. Anybody can say anything about anybody at any time. And, um, you have to, you have to, you know, have, have some blinders on. You can't, you can't be too high or too low off of, off of a lot of that stuff because your circle of influence, your circle of friends are, you can probably count them on 10, 10, two hands, 10 fingers. And that's how it should be, you know? And if you try to try to do things for so many people you get the water gets muddied and you don't know what to believe you don't know what's true you don't know it's fake you don't you don't know so i think be true to yourself is number one um be a genuine human being um be good to other people (laughs) we need more goodness in this world um be good to each other um help out and understand that you know somebody just might be having a bad day like like you know you can't we're so quick to jump down somebody's throat or say something to somebody, but it's like, just, you don't know what they're going through, you know? And so really consciously understand that and think about that before you open your mouth. Could not agree more, man. That's, I mean, you know, what's funny. My wife and I were at dinner last night and our server, um, when she brought her drinks, she she brought me the wrong drink. And when I told her, I, I, I was just nice about it. You know what? It was a mistake. And and she came back like five minutes later and she thanked me for being nice because you know why? I'm sure a lot of people aren't nice in those situations. Right. Like, Absolutely. Like, did you give her being a tip? Nice. Did you give her a tip? I got a- Of course I gave her. <laughs> of course. But no, it's, it underscores the point you were just making. It's like, you don't right. know what someone's going through and people make mistakes. And it's like, Absolutely. you know, just a little bit of kindness, a little bit of understanding. I mean, we, we all make mistakes and it's the way that others react to it. I mean, that's, that's really what resonates with people. So yeah, uh, and, it's a good point. I th- and I, I think you just, you know, your, your whole approach um, to, to what you just said, as far as like, you know, being genuine and, and, you know, showing that, that you care about people. I think it, it speaks volumes. Go ahead. Yeah, And yeah, yeah, let me sneak in here. Cause I think DT, you, you said earlier in the show, you know, Kudos to Justin, you know, for knowing his why. Now, for you, I mean, you, we, I think we talked about a lot of things, but what is it that drives you, man? I mean, you, you, you're so driven. I mean, you jumped out and you, you know, jumped out in entrepreneurship earlier in your life. You know, you got into sports and marketing and all different things you've done uh, for the sports programs at Michigan State. Now you're, you're taking another dive. You know, it's like you're driven, man. It's like you, it just comes across you're going to be successful no matter what. Um, and and, and you, you're going to go out swinging. So uh, for you, what is your why? What drives you to be great? My drive, my drive is I touch on with, with my dad when he passed away. We're really tight. And um, Mo, you probably, you met him a couple times when he came up for games. Great but dude, great dude. Just just you know, and, and he raised my brother and I for the most part um, by himself. Worked all day, worked all night, and you know we were little kids and. And he was, you know, just put so much time and effort 
to us, you know, driving us to soccer practice at the time. I didn't even start playing basketball till ninth grade. It was all soccer and for him being from Jamaica. Um, he just loved soccer. And so, uh, so he was just always there. Right. And so for my why are my kids, you know, and I, I want to instill a lot of the values that my dad um, put in me into them. And so now that was part of why I left Michigan state. Cause I want to spend more time with my kids Two, Now I'm helping people. You know, um, I can help them out financially. A lot of the stuff I've learned in the last six months, I've implemented with my own kids and my own family, you know, in terms of, you know, I can't talk securities or anything like that, but um, just in terms of starting them off financially now, as it's so important. There's so much that, that we can do for our children right now before they're even like when they're born. Right. So um, so I guess at the end of the day, Mo, that's my why. Like that, my why is my family, my kids, and leaving them, making them better than I was, you know, than I can ever be. And that starts with building that foundation. And so um, that's probably why, you know, that's why I've jumped into to different fields and, and I believe heavily in multiple streams of income as well. You know, that's my why. That gets me excited. Like, okay, <laughs> let, me see, let me see money coming in from, from different angles, right? Um, and that's another mindset we have is, as citizens of this world is that you're only supposed to work one job, right? And, 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 you know, make a paycheck. And it's like, why? Like, why? Like, no, I can, there's, if I have the time and the passion and the drive, I, I shouldn't just be making one in, income. I should be making a multiple, right? And so that's, you know, I don't know, I guess, like I said, the older I get, the more, the more I, I understand life in the world. And, um, but at the heart of it all is, is my family. Well, we're all just trying to follow your lead, David, as far as uh, understanding life. Uh, but you, you seem to have a, a real good feel for it and you seem like you're in a great place, um, you know, as, as far as your, your career and your personal life goes. So, uh, again, congrats to you on on the gig. Uh, we, we obviously wish you tons of success. We'll be following your path, and uh, and we really appreciate you sharing your story with us and some of the some of the things you've been through. And uh, you know, your your journey obviously is 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 taking multiple uh, twists and turns. But uh, we're really happy for you. And thanks again for uh, for being with us today. Appreciate it, fellas. Thanks for having me.